Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Any comments on that from Dr. Ricardo from, or from Sandy or from Beth or Deb? I think that the only um, comment that I have, and, and Arthur and I had a discussion about this last night, is uh, the software systems that you're using are going to support the documentation that you need to discuss maintenance or prevention of decline. Um, my background is home care. So one of the things that I'm concerned about on the home care side, and I don't imagine that long-term care is much different, is our, do our software systems are all about improvement. And all of the items that we can use in the electronic medical record are about improvement. That's going to have to be changed by the developers of the software systems so that we can document that what our goal is, is to prevent decline. And incidentally, you know, as a result of that conversation, I think, we, we, as I mentioned to some of the folks here, we're, we've been talking to, to the, the, uh, the, um, the folks at, at your trade association regarding do a, doing a conference on this. And I think we may be wanting to invite some of those, the major software players. Because it just hadn't occurred to me that so much of the documentation that you folks were putting in is, 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 is you, it's right into the machine, right? It's all based on their software. So to the extent that, that Ma Medicare is now requiring a different kind of documentation, that's going to have major impacts in terms of your trying to figure out how, how to get that into, into, into your programs, which weren't designed for it. Any other questions regarding this example, or can we go to the next example? If not, second, okay. second case study. Okay, and remember, there's no improvement standard no longer keeps someone on Medicare. So again, the plateau, the goals are not reaching their goals, no longer can disqualify someone from Medicare. It has to show that they're being, main, you can also go for the goals, but you also have to remember maintaining someone and supervising them so that they can maintain and return home is a goal that Medicare will cover. In case two, this client is an 80-year-old female who was living at home with mild dementia. She was safe at home. She was able to prepare her meals. She was still dressing and grooming herself. Family members were very involved, providing oversight, and took this client all to, to all of her medical appointments. This client was still driving, um, but she was driving less. This client was safe at home. They noticed family came to visit. They noticed that their mother was much more confused than usual. She thought her husband was still alive and he had passed away years ago. She had not changed her clothes in a few days. She was unaware of the day of the week. This client read the newspaper but was unaware of the date, so they knew that their mother was much more confused. Um, she was not eating or drinking and spending more time in bed and on the couch, having some decline and not being able to walk as well. The daughter called the doctor who suggested that she bring her mother into the emergency room. In the emergency room, she was started on antibiotics. Her oxygen levels were low. She required oxygen, and they started her on nebulizer treatments were started. She responded well to the IV antibiotics. However, the confusion stayed, and after being evaluated by PT, they realized her mobility was poor, and they admitted her to the hospital. She again had her three midnights and she was sent to a rehab setting with the goal of, again, returning home with her mild dementia. I think in this case um, that she was admitted to um, the hospital due to the pneumonia, and I think like any dementia uh, patient, any type of an infection can affect change in status, in mental status. And pre gmo um, she met the qualifications. She went in. She was receiving IV antibiotics. She was receiving nebulizer treatments. She also um, had nutritionally declined, was not taking in her normal um, daily intake. So she was being monitored for these items. Um, Medicare would her pre-GMO status is therapy went in and screened, OT went in and screened, nursing was going to cover the IV antibiotics and her NEB treatments. Now she goes to post-GMO and again she is going to need a longer, probably a longer train of training and teaching. 
for her with the nebulizer treatments because mentally she's not back to where she was. She's needing a lot more encouragement even to understand of holding the neb treatment and being able to complete it when uh, the nurse, the skilled nurse is using this. PT is going to work with her on her mobility and OT is going to work on her ADLs. The family wants her at baseline to go back home. Um, and they are looking to be part of the training that's going on in long-term care. I think one of the biggest things is to make sure that on the Medicare meetings that everybody is discussing the same verbiage as to making sure that the plan of care is being followed, that it is to try to get her back to her baseline. And unfortunately, you can't keep use the word improve all the time because, again, you get caught in that web because you don't want her to um, not improve and then that was part of your plan of care. So I think that on discharge, and we talked a little bit about this at our loss, which was home care, they're in a similar situation because if you're not improving, I think it does. They say revenue won't be affected, but I think your rug scores, which drive a, a lot of your Medicare payment, if you're not going for a goal for improvement, you might be going in a lower case. So it's very important that you are looking at all these things each time you meet for your Medicare meeting and that documentation definitely needs to be there to make sure that each time you're writing, you're looking at it, you're making sure everything is being qualified. Yeah. Or com com well, let's say comments and then questions. Okay. Comments? And I think as long as it's a, as long as that you can use the words deteriorate at a slower rate and Medicare will cover for that because that's the kind of new documentation that Medicare will, is looking at when they do their audits. I think a concern of mine is the skilled care. I think altogether too many times, especially in home care, because again, that's my background, but um, I'll challenge you to think about it on the long-term care side as well, is are we as skilled therapists, I'm an RN, um, are we giving away our, our education by assuming that a family member or an aide can assess a patient the same way that we can? For this patient that ended up in a long-term care facility, they, they're now on nebulizer treatments. They had a pneumonia. Uh, she had mental status changes. She's got nutrition, she's got nutrition changes, which are going to also change the risk level of her, skill, of her skin. So as clinicians, I think that we need to get better, and as administrators, I think you need to make sure that your clinicians are not giving away the talent level that they have and the education that they have by assuming that an aide or a family member can do what they're doing. And again, it's all about documenting it. Even if it's going back to the original way that we were taught to document as nurses and therapists and care plans and interventions and outcomes, we've got to go back to making sure that we're documenting the skill that we're providing, because we are providing a skill, and we're, we're giving it away half the time. And I, th I know I've had that conversation with Sandy before, and I think that that relates to really where some of the rub is going to happen with Medicare now. Once again, now that the plateauing is not the way of causing the exits for Medicare, right? There's going to be more concentration on whether the skilled, the, the care that's needed is skilled. Skilled assessment for a patient that is at this moment plateaued is, is extremely important because the skill of the clinician will identify the risks of them beginning to deteriorate again and hopefully intervene. Yeah, yes, ma'am. And, and I think every, each client, each patient's unique condition is what will drive the length of Medicare. And that is exactly what Sandy was discussing that you need to report every part of that individual's needs and not dismiss what you're doing is very important as a clinician and as a physical therapist and occupational therapist and speech therapist. All of that documentation is what will support Medicare. It's 9 o'clock. We're not going to get to the third example. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that this has been useful for a lot of the folks who are here. Uh, and I know it's been useful for us in terms of hearing your, your comments or having these discussions and therefore kind of informing what hopefully will be the next set of educational things regarding, regarding GIMO. Uh, if you have further questions for us,
I think in our materials we have our, our you, know, you know, email us or, or contact us and we'll be glad to try to get your responses to any of this stuff. Uh, in turn, thanks very much for coming. We hope to be doing other presentations like this, to be working with the State Ombudsman and with the ASAPs, uh, especially here in, uh, in Worcester, in Massachusetts, and also in the Tri-Valley area. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and please, could I have a round of applause for our wonderful speakers, our guest speakers who came today? Thank you very much. <laughs>